In this Inkscape lesson, we'll learn how to create intertwined circular vines. This is kind of like a part two to a recent video I put up about drawing intertwined wavy but not circular vines. If you haven't watched that video, don't worry about it because the method we're using this one is quite different. Okay, so to begin, let's activate the pen tool here. Click in the canvas, hold control and click over here, then right click. This is going to be for a single segment of the vines we create. We first need to make the stroke bigger, which we can do by right clicking the stroke width value down here in the status bar and choosing something bigger like 10. Depending on the size of your screen, you might need to go with a somewhat larger or smaller number. Ok, now let's zoom in on the path sum by putting our cursor here, holding control and scrolling up the mouse wheel. Next we want to add another node at the center of this path. To do this, we can switch to the node tool here, select both of the path's nodes, and click this insert new node button up here. Then let's select just the center node, click this button up here to turn it into a symmetric node, hold control and drag out the node's handle sum. We want to keep these horizontal. Now let's hold control and drag the node itself up some. Alright, now we're going to add a thorn to the top of this curve. But first we need to turn the stroke of this path into a path itself, which we can do by going to path, stroke to path. This is a necessary step for the path effect we'll use later. For the thorn, let's go back to the pin tool, click inside the path here, then up here, then inside the path over here, and click the first point again to close it off. Let's switch to the select tool, select both of these, and turn them into a single path by going to Path, Union. Now we can go to the Node tool and adjust the curves and nodes if we want. Ok, let's switch to the Select tool. Let's duplicate the path by right clicking it and choosing Duplicate. Let's click this button up here to flip it vertically. Now we want to turn on snapping with this button over here. Then let's drag this duplicate down and to the right until the cusp nodes at the end snap together. Let's duplicate the first path again, which we can do with this shortcut control D. Let's bring it over here until it snaps to the other one. Let's now select all three of these paths and turn them into a single path by going to Path, Union. Now in order to make a repeatable pattern out of this, we only want what's between the center of this peak and the center of this one. To get rid of the unnecessary parts, we can switch to the pen tool and snap to the smooth node here. Hold control to create a straight line and click up here. Then click around here and back to the starting point. Now let's go to the select tool, hold shift and click the other path to add it to the selection and go to path, difference. Now we can do the same for the other side. Switch to the pen tool, snap to the smooth node here, hold control and click up here, then come around here and close it off. Now switch to the select tool, hold shift and click the other path, and go to path, difference. If we were to duplicate this now, and bring it over here until the pieces snap together, we can see that it repeats perfectly. Ok, we can delete these duplicates. Let's go ahead and turn the snapping back off. There's actually one more thing we want to do with this path. Let's select it and let's give it a stroke by holding shift and clicking a color in the color palette. Right now we have a stroke along both vertical ends of the path. This will cause problems later on when we go to add a stroke to the intertwined vines. To fix it we need to delete one of the vertical segments. To do this we can go to the node tool and click one of the segments. Then click this button up here that says delete segment between two non endpoint nodes. Now we can turn the stroke back off by holding shift and clicking the red X down here and we should be good to go. Alright, let's zoom back out by holding control and scrolling down the mouse wheel. And we can pan by pressing down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse. Now let's switch to the circles and ellipses tool here, hold control and create a large circle, which we will use to repeat our vine pattern on. Before we add the pattern to the circle, we want to turn it into a path first by going to Path, Object to Path. Then switch to the Node tool, select all the nodes, and click this button to make them symmetric nodes. This will prevent the shape of the circle from getting warped when we add the pattern along path path effect to it, which we'll do now. So let's go to path, 
path effects to open the path effects dialog. Then click this plus button down here. And click pattern along path here. To put our bind pattern on the circle, we first need to select it and copy it into our clipboard with Ctrl C. Then we can select the circle again, click this button in here that says link to path and clipboard, and change pattern copies to repeated stretched. Alright, and because we use the link button, if you want to resize the pattern, we can select our vine path here, hold Ctrl and Shift, and scale it up or down. Actually, in Inkscape version 1.2, this feature had a bug that was fixed in version 1.2.1, which I'm using now. If you happen to be using 1.2, after changing the size of this path, you will have to copy it into the clipboard again with Ctrl C, then select the circle, and click this Paste Path button next to the Link button. Alright, and another thing we can do in here is change the width of the pattern with this width box. We can also change the color if we want. Okay, when we have the pattern the way we want it, we can finalize that path effect by going to Path, Object to Path. Now we can duplicate this path with Ctrl D, click the duplicate to get the rotation handles, hold Ctrl and rotate it once. Let's make this one a different color. Alright, to make these vines look intertwined, we need to make it so the vine that appears on top at one crossing appears on the bottom at the next crossing, then on top again, and so on. This means that at each crossing, we need to cut out the overlapping section from the bottom vine, so that only the top vine is visible there. To do this, let's first switch to the pen tool, and create a box that covers one of the intersections like this. Then let's skip the next intersection and create a box over this one. Let's continue around the vines, drawing a box over every second intersection. Now we want to select all of the boxes, which we can do easily by going to the Select tool and right-clicking one of the boxes, then going to Select Same Stroke Color. Now let's turn them into a single path by going to Path, Union. Let's also change the stroke color to anything by holding Shift and clicking one of the colors in the palette. Then let's go back to the Pen tool and create boxes over the remaining intersections. Now we want to select all of the black boxes we just created by going to the Select tool, right clicking one, and going to Select Same Stroke Color. Let's turn them into a single path by going to Path, Union. Okay, we're going to make two versions of intertwined vines, one with the vines staying flush together like they are now, and one with a little bit of spacing separating them at the intersections. So let's select all of these, duplicate them with Ctrl D, and move them over here for now. Okay, back over here, let's select one of the vines and duplicate it with Ctrl D, then make it any color. Now we want to select one of these box paths and bring it to the top with this button up here. Then hold Shift and click the vine duplicate. We want to make it so only these parts of the vine duplicate within the boxes are left remaining. To do this, we can go to Path, Intersection. Then we want to cut these sections out of the vine that we didn't duplicate. So let's hold Shift and select this vine. And to cut the sections out, we can go to Path, Difference. If I move this path up here, we can see that the parts have been cut out. Now we want to press Ctrl D to duplicate this vine we just cut, make it another color, select the other box path, bring it to the top, hold Shift and select the vine duplicate, and go to Path, Intersection. Then hold Shift and select the other vine, and go to Path, Difference. Now we have intertwined vines. If we want these to have just outlines, we can select them both, hold Shift and click a color down here to give them a stroke, and maybe lower the width some. Then click the red X here to turn off the fill color. You might notice now, however, 
that the stroke is blunt at the ends of the thorns. To make them pointed, we can open the fill and stroke dialog with this button up here, then go to the stroke style tab in here, and in the join category, we want to have the miter join option here selected, and now we simply need to set the value of this box next to it to something like 20. Now the stroke is pointed. Next, let's see how we can add some spacing at the intersections between these vines over here. Let's first select one of the vines and duplicate it with Ctrl D. Let's make it a different color. And in the fill and stroke dialog, let's use this opacity slider down here to make it somewhat transparent. Okay, now we want to outset this duplicate some. To do this, we can go to Path, Outset. This increases the size of the path by the same amount at all points. We can keep doing outset until the path is the size we want. We need to remember how many times we do it, however, so we can do it the same number of times for the other vine. So three for me. Okay, now let's select one of the box paths, raise it to the top, shift click the transparent path, and go to path, intersection. Then we'll shift and click the other vine, and go to path, difference. Now with this vine we just cut still selected, let's duplicate it with control D, Change the color and lower the opacity. Then do path outset the same number of times as we did with the other one. Now select the remaining box path, raise it to the top, hold shift and select the transparent path, and go to path intersection. Then hold shift and select the other vine, and go to path difference. Okay, that's how we can create intertwined circular vines in Inkscape. I hope you enjoyed the lesson, and please let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Thank you for watching.